Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to The Main Phase, a Magic the Gathering podcast aimed at bringing you the best content and the best news about our favorite game. Today, we're going to talk about spoilers and Ravnica Allegiance, and just jib-jab a bit. Stay tuned. JB, what's up, man? It's going pretty good. Yeah, going pretty good. How was your Christmas? Oh, my Christmas was fantastic. Ho ho ho! Ho ho ho! Indeed. And, and your New Year? Uh, New Year was young. I uh, what I does went, that mean? I went to bed at like ten. So old, old. Yes, well, the old. night was young. The night was young. You are old. I am old. Not that really right. even close to old <laughs> yet. But that's you know, I get it. I understand. I mean, my uh, the rest of my family was in bed pretty early, and I sat there by myself and watched the ball drop in New York and called it good. We're not even close to New York. That's an hour ahead, but uh, drank a bottle of champagne by myself. More appropriately, a glass out of a bottle of champagne and the rest of it went to waste. Yep. Uh, So how was your Christmas? That was pretty good. Got some time with the family. Got some new magic cards. Awesome. I got zero magic related gifts. Oh, yep. Except for for the... uh, the two boxes of Ultimate Masters that I told my wife she bought me. So, Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to guide them down the path to success when it comes to gift giving, Debo. Yep, I literally told my wife, Nissa, you have already bought my Christmas presents. Do not buy anything else. And okay. she's like, okay, well, I'm still getting you something else. I'm like, Dang it. All right. <laughs> of course. Yeah. What were your box toppers? Um, well, I still haven't opened one of my boxes. Why? Uh, well, because we're going to be going to see the guys out in Colombia, and we're going to oh do some drafts. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but I did open half of one box. I've been, I've been half of a box. Half of a box. I've been, I've been holding it because again, I want to try to draft with it as much as I can. Who does that to themselves? I, I know. Shame I do apparently. You. Yeah. Um, but no, the the one box topper that I did open. What's um, the best thing you've opened? Um, because it's clearly not the box topper. Well, the, the box topper was probably the best thing. What but was it? It, it, it was a Fulminator Mage. Okay. Okay. Uh, Destroy Land. Mm-hmm. Like so, it. so, you know, uh, in terms of the, like the MSRP, it, it hits like right at that $50 mark. So, you know, it's, it, I mean, it's a pretty decent open. Um, yeah. The, the. Very, very popular card in modern. Mm-hmm, very popular card. The other like quality card that I got was, was uh, Back to Basics. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. That's a card that's going to keep going up. Yeah. They only printed that in one set. One set. Yep. Urza Saga. Well, now two sets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was basically the best pulls. I, I mean, there, there were a couple that were uh, within that like $15 range, but. Any of the big Eldrazi? No Eldrazi yet. I also haven't seen a Liliana or a Snapcaster or anything okay. like that. Not, no Tarmogoyf. You'll probably see one. Uh, probably one out of two boxes. Of those. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing on the big Eldrazi? You got any of those sitting around? I do have the Kozilek, the Butcher of Truth. There you go. And I also have an Ulamog already. There you go. Uh, they're both in my Jund lands deck. Mm. From the Commander 2018 Land Commander. God bless you. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That is just fantastic. (laughs) So we are going to jump right into some spoilers. Spoilers. Why don't you go ahead and pull that up while I start in on Tithe Taker. Tithe Taker. Tithe Taker has really got my attention here. It is one colorless, one white for a 2-1 human soldier. From Ravnica Allegiance, it says, During your turn, spells your opponent's cast cost one colorless more to cast, and abilities your opponents activate cost one colorless more to activate unless they're mana abilities. It also has a new Afterlife 1 clause, uh, which is a new ability that we are seeing fresh from Ravnica Allegiance. Mm -hmm. And uh, Afterlife says, uh, When this creature dies, create a 1-1 white and black spirit creature token with flying. So we're getting some lingering soul style effects here, right? Lingering Souls makes just white 1-1 one, well, one flying. Spirits, actually, but... um, what's really cool is there actually is a card called Afterlife. Right. It's two and white. Uh, it's from like way long ago. I think it's a sorcery. It's a destroy target creature. Its controller creates a 1-1 one, one spirit. Right. So it's it's literally that card tacked on These another things card. just happen yep. in magic, right? Yep. Hex proof. Uh, think about our Gothian Enchantress. Cannot mm-hmm. be the target of spells or abilities. Uh, your opponent's control, mm-hmm. right? Suddenly, we have Hexproof created sometime later down the line, right? Yep. Uh, No longer are they writing out that specific verbiage on cards. Rather, they are taking that ability and applying it directly to the permanents. But this human soldier. You know what I like about this guy? Tell me. 
He's not legendary. He is not legendary. He's not. He's the, straight hate bears. It's so great. He is straight <laughs> hate bears, man. It's I wish he was a tutu. I, I wish he was a tutu. But I mean, it, the, the fact the fact that he taxes your opponents on activated abilities and on the spells that they cast. It doesn't specify like Thalia, where it's only non creature spells. That's correct. So it does say though, and here's the one drawback to this card mm-hmm. during your turn. Uh, it's kind of like the Grand Abolisher, right? Right. So the uh, uh, Grand Abolisher is a uh, white white. For a two-two that that says your opponents can't cast spells on your on your turn, can't it's a lockout, right? So it's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like a mix between Thalia and Grand Abolisher. It is. Does this human soldier make it into the modern humans deck? Uh, I think it's got a, a good shot at it. It does, and I also think that it's got some real potential for some standard interactions as well. Okay, uh, based upon what we see, who knows? Who knows? I think strictly he starts out as a sideboard card. Mm-hmm. Right. We see him as an answer to maybe a couple of the archetypes that may roll out. Now, granted, as we roll into Ravnica Allegiance, I don't really know that much is going to change in the way of some of the powerful decks. Uh, I think mono blue, you know, that mono blue deck, mm-hmm. right? Curious mm-hmm. Obsession, mono blue. I don't think that's going anywhere. That's not going anywhere. Green, black, certainly Explorer, not going anywhere. May just get some additional fuel. Right. We will see some Jund mechanics start yep. to appear, and we'll get to the reason why we think that's going to happen in just a moment. But uh, Tithe Taker, uh, maybe as a main board card. I think it'd be a good main board card in like a Mono White Weenies deck that wants to fight against counter control. Sure. Because it comes sure, down yeah, early, yeah, and it makes yeah. their spells cost a little bit more. Um, so I, I think that's that's the probably the only like main board a- aspect that you'd see from that. You may see this in like a blue white or a just guy yes control variant where it's in the sideboard to fight against the control ma- uh, matchup. This really does kind of just push control out of the way and ensures mm-hmm. that your early early especially especially your turn three and turn four plays actually resolve. What's also great about this card too is because of that afterlife one mechanic, it's gonna fit really well in an aristocrat style deck. Especially as a main board answer uh, to some control variants, things like that, that would that are used to uh, shut down decks like that. Absolutely. So yeah. playing this card, just having that ability to get that afterlife one to get another sacrifice target is going to be amazing. And then playing this with like an Ajani where you can get him back. Yeah. Amazing. Really, 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 really cool. Yeah. An- another card to maybe consider also is Sun Scorcher Bishop or something like that. It, it was the three white, white, three, four with vigilance vampire from uh, Ixalan. Yeah. That says whenever. Not Bishop of Rebirth. Bishop of Rebirth. That's it. Yeah, that's yes, it. Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, so Bishop of Rebirth says whenever it attacks, you can bring back a creature yeah. with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard. Well, this may start to be, it's kind of like our, our standard Sun Titan yeah, a little bit. it really is. It's never really seen any play. Not nearly as good. It's not, it's not, as, it's not a Sun Titan. Right. It is not. Um, but, it, you know, maybe with cards like this where we can have this, this afterlife type of effect, maybe we can start seeing some more of that type of a, of a synergy where we sacrifice it, we and attack, we get exactly it back. that's exactly what I think we're seeing here is a Johnny adversary of tyrants finally getting some real good backup. Yep. Uh, in terms of a 2-1. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful card. All right. We've got a reprint from Invasion in Absorb. It is one white, two blue for a counter spell. It says counter target spell, you gain three life. Were you excited about this card at all? I am pretty excited about this card. I think it fits really well alongside Ionize, which is a, 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 another counter spell. One that colorless, saw. one red, one blue. That's right. That says counter target spell. It deals two damage to the that spell's caster. Yep. So. This card is going to be really great alongside. It's a little bit more difficult to cast, but I think, you know, maybe you'll see like a Jeskai Control. You'll see one or two of these along with Ionize, maybe playing a couple of these in your sideboard, especially against like a Rakdos Burn type of a deck. Yeah. yeah. Because I I imagine something like that's going to be coming around the corner with Rakdos showing up. So I, I definitely like Absorb. I think it's a great reprint. And uh, I'm excited to see what it does in stand. I'm going to go gut feel on this, and I'm going to say search for his Kanta, four of Absorb, mm-hmm. four of Ionize, Teferi, Niv-Mizzet, Lava Coil. I think they're just going to go- Don't forget Sinister Sabotage. Yeah, I think they're just going to go right after it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think if anything, a spell like this makes Teferi even more powerful. Imagine this also with Karn as well. So you've got uh, uh, Teferi, Karn- uh, both providing you draw back up along with 
your your counter control. your opponent goes to cast a spell you absorb the spell you gain three life you mm-hmm. trigger niv mizzet you deal the damage to a creature or to their face you draw a card uh, I just think it's going to strengthen things across the board. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people out there who don't really like Absorb. Absorb maybe felt better into the invasion block, but I think all in all, acceptable reprint. Moving yeah. on. <laughs> so this is a card that we're both kind of cheesing over. Oh, yeah. And this is one of the cards that we think is the reason Jund is going to make a huge splash. It's coming back. It's Bedevil. Yes. It's black, black, and red. What does it do, JB? Black, black, red for instant speed, destroy target artifact creature or planeswalker. Oh my God, this is so good. Let me just read the flavor text there. It's Mm -hmm. easy to get taken in by the spectacle to enjoy a bit of naughty amusement, but make no mistake, the cult of Rakdos is a danger from Tajik. It's so good. Oh man, I'm telling you what, a spell like this. Even the art on it is fantastic. It really by the is. Way. Yeah, it, it is. And it's got that old feel. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got that folio feel. F O G L I O. Mm-hmm. Look up that artist. Some of the most uh, famous magic cards in history are uh, done by folio. They are absolutely wonderful in terms of their art. They have that classic magic feel. It's almost cartoon esque, it's got a very Americana style appeal to it in terms of the way that it's delivered. But this particular spell, again, destroy target artifact creature or planeswalker at instant speed for three Mm -hmm. mana. I am telling you. Yeah. I I am telling you, man. Now now this, this having this card uh, in the format, I can see people now playing four of this and actually running four at assassin's trophy. No question about it in their deck. Cause now, now they don't care. Yeah. Because if if they ramp into their planeswalker, will you have an easy answer to it? Jund is back yeah. in force, right? You and I have been getting really kind of all over Vevictus Osmati the Dire. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been looking into various other big dragons, other cheesy kind of mechanics. But ultimately, I think that even just using, you know, Vraska Golgari Queen for mm-hmm. abrupt decay on a stick, uh, with that is her minus three ability. By the way, is mm-hmm. basically an abrupt decay. Uh, but uh, coupled with Bedevil and Assassin's Trophy, it is getting there. Yeah. Uh, now, the, the one thing to with Vivictus, he doesn't quite match up really well with the Assassin's Trophies and Bedevil because you, you want to be running permanence with him. But with something like maybe Daragaz or something like that, where he's like you're, you're playing a, an, a Jund control game, and then all of a sudden you drop in with a 7-7 seven, seven hasty, hasty flying trampler, uh, that also comes back if it dies. It seems pretty good. I'm going to try to prove you wrong with Vevictus. I think that I can find other permanents uh, to be able to sacrifice to him and just use this as control leverage. And it may not actually be, and there may be there may be val- validity to your argument there, but it may not actually be uh, Vevictus mm. that we use with this. Maybe it is Jund Walkers. No, that'd be cool too. Maybe, yeah. maybe it is something else, some it, other type of big baddie that gets us there. And if we are going to run Vevictus, let's say we are, we also have things like treasure map that we can scry the top perfect. of our library. Yeah, perfect, make sure we're perfect. getting value. That's a great idea. So Karn. Yeah, Karn would be a good answer too. He's uh, great with every single card mm-hmm. we're gonna review today. Yep. So uh <laughs> which that, which also he's he's on curve. You have two, three, four right there. There it is. Mm-hmm. You can count. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh you witnessed a first. Gruel Spellbreaker is the next up on the spoilers list. I um, am very, <laughs> very excited about so this. So excited for Gruel. Take us through it. Uh so I love aggro decks uh just as much as I love jank combos. And so Gruel Spellbreaker is one red green for a three three ogre warrior. That's that has the keyword riot, which I'll get to in a second. And it also has trample. And as long as it's your turn, you and Gruel Spellbreaker have Hexproof. So Riot, uh, for those who don't know, is it says this creature enters the battlefield with your choice. Well, plus one, plus one counter or haste. Mm. So. Wow. In a, in, That's awesome. In an aggro style deck, a Naya deck or. Uh, Just straight green, red, green. with yeah. Rada. Oh my God. With so Rada. Good. Look at that. Oh, Gru- the Gruel, kind of card we need. Yeah. Gruel is going to be a powerhouse just an absolute powerhouse with, yeah. with this riot ability i agree uh, being able to, to either have haste or or this this uh, plus one plus one counter so good and, and then let's talk about this ability on it is not a legend is not a legend at all not and, at all and it says as long as it's your turn you and gruel spellbreaker have hexproof you 
So you have hex proof. Bye bye, settle. There it is. It's gone. Settle is gone. <laughs> it is no longer there. So so all of you red green uh, creature aggro decks have at it. That's just, right. Just swing it. Rada. I'm telling you, Rada yeah. is coming. Yep. R A D H A. Look that card up from Dominaria, everybody, and then look up Gruel Spellbreaker and get excited. Yeah, because it's happening. That's it. That's the real deal. All right, right I'll, tell, I'll tell you what it does. So it's a three four with haste, and it says I'm going to make them look for it. Huh? I know. <laughs> just let them know. I'm just going to let you know. So whenever uh, it and any other creatures attack, you add that much red or green mana and any combination of of uh, red or green to your mana pool. It doesn't go out of your mana pool until end of turn. So you can swing in, let's say with, with five creatures, you get five red and or green mana, depending on what you need, and then you get it into until uh, your end step. So it's pretty dang good. Here it comes, man. I'm telling you. Red green aggro is coming mm-hmm. back. We we are getting it back. It's going to be fantastic. Gruel in the namesake of the spellbreaker card. We know that that is the champion that's leading the pack, mm-hmm. so to speak. All right, so here's another card. I think this card helps bump Merfolk into a competitive list. Yeah. So it's Zagana, Utopian Speaker. Two green and blue for a 4-4. It's a legendary creature, Merfolk Merfolk Wizard. I think you're going to see it more in the Merfolk deck than you will the Wizards deck. But it says when it enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it, draw a card. So Merfolk already wants to be putting plus one, plus one counters on things. It does it all the time. And then this comes down. And you get to draw a card. Yeah. Great. You're popping one, one counters on our Merfolk all the time. I mean, think about the legitimacy here of Kamena Mm -hmm. style decks. Now where we're tapping multiple Merfolk for plus one, plus one counters. Not to mention Zagana has that adaptability on the text here. That's right. right. We got an adapt four ability, which is coming in Ravdico Allegiance for four colorless, a green and a blue. Uh, you can adapt four, which says if it has no plus one, plus one counters on it, you pay the cost, put four plus one, plus one counters on it. And then each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter has trample. Yeah. So what's really cool about this, this Value card. Value town. Yeah. It, this, despite it being a, well, I guess it's technically a 10 mana, uh, a 10 mana, eight, eight with trample. But despite that, the fact that it says if it has no plus one, plus one counters on it. That's correct. So maybe there's a way to move counters around that we haven't seen yet. Uh, some way to play with like the Simic Ascendancy that we if talked we about. We start moving earlier. counters around and we start doing the whole spike thing from Exodus, right? Where we're able to pay two colorless or something and mm-hmm. start moving plus one plus one counters around. Maybe actually with Adapt and let's get excited here. Maybe spikes are coming back. Maybe something like that. A new creature we haven't seen. Some new type. Who knows? Uh, moving plus one plus one counters around is not a foreign thing to Magic the Gathering. Right. It, it has been done more than a decade ago. We were moving plus one plus one counters around from creature to creature to creature. Uh, it, it is completely possible. But yes, Zagana with an 8 8 body represents the largest non pumped Merfolk that we have seen uh, in this particular standard block since Merfolk returned in Ixalan. Now, I do have a question for you. Yeah. So let's say you have Zagana down. Sure. And she has no counters on her. And you pay 12 mana. So you pay six to get adapt four. And then in response, you pay six. That's correct. It you is get, not a tap ability. So you, you have two triggers on the stack. Would it become a 12 12? Yes. Both triggers would resolve since they are on the stack. Unless, and we'll have to check into this and adapt, mm-hmm. the first resolves and then the other fizzles. If it, if it like checks. Once it resolves versus once you activate I don't know how the board it. state would check, but the game would have to check responsibly in some way. Mm-hmm. If the stacks are on the trigger, one would think that both would resolve unless the absolute of the resolution of that particular activation was that there were no plus one, plus one counters. And since one has to resolve first, the other may not. And You may have just wasted six mana. So we'd have to just check the rules on that, but... It's a fanciful thought and I love mm-hmm. it. Like one of the things that makes me think about this is, um, you know, we have that uh, profane pro- procession from Rivals of Ixalan. Yes. So a profane procession, for those who don't know, is an enchantment that says one white and black. Uh, you can pay three white and black to exile a creature uh, your opponent controls. And then once you have three that are exiled by a profane procession, you can flip it into a land and then pay four mana and tap to 
bring one of those creatures onto the battle. Yes, Profane Procession, so, I think, is a very underplayed card right now. Right. So, but what makes me think about that is I, I had asked a judge once, well, let's say you uh, had infinite mana and you just kept activating Profane Procession. Sure. In response to itself. Yes. Uh, after the third one, it flips, but then would, when all the other triggers resolve, would they still exile and you still have access to it? The judge said yes. So that makes me wonder if, you know, it, it, with Adapt, if we're going to have two Adapts on the, on, the, on the stack at the same time, if we wouldn't get the two... The two My gut counters. feel is that it resolves, we get the additional plus one, plus one counters mm-hmm. because they were on the stack at the same time. Right. I don't know, but it is a fanciful thought and I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a reprint of Mortify, an uncommon. It's been around since Guild Pact. Yep. Uh, you know, it's been around a while. One colorless, one white, one black, destroy target creature or enchantment at instant speed. Uh, uh, great for vamps. Orzov needs something like mm-hmm. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Utility. Moving on. Yep. Emergency power. <laughs> this one has got you just doing cartwheels. It is five colorless, one white and a blue. Instant speed, each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards. Exile emergency powers with the new addendum ability, which states if you cast this spell during your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. You know why I like this card so much? Tell me. So despite the fact that you get an instant speed fresh hand, uh, which is amazing, and so is your opponent, but whatever, with that addendum, Let's say we play this with something like um, Primal Amulet. Okay. Okay. And we've already flipped the amulet. Sure. And then we double this. Mm-hmm. Or w- with a, a, a uh, an ulted uh, Mirari's Conjecture. Even and better. And we double this. Sure, yeah. Um, so now all of a sudden, we draw seven, and we're playing it on, on our turn. We draw seven. We get a free seven cast. We draw. We shuffle back in. We draw another seven. We get another free seven drop. Like that's here comes a copy of Teferi and Azor. Oh my god! All at the same time, that, for the low, low cost of just seven mana. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, hey, if it's gonna be a control matchup, it's they get kinda, the seven mana fast. It's kind of silly. Yeah, they really do, especially with searches in play. Mm-hmm. I can tell you right now that that card is going to skyrocket in price yeah. and probably hold its price. So yeah. crack packs until you got them. It's going to be also an an instant commander favorite. People are going to be playing this until the day's end. Yeah, may the wizards be with you in terms of your ability to find those in packs. If you do go out and buy them directly, good for you. That is (laughs) fine. I am okay with it early. Do Do, it early. Do it early. Right. Don't wait. Don't wait for this one to come down in price because I really don't believe it's going to. Uh, Some of the biggest streamers and brewers in the Magic the Gathering community are already starting to post lists regarding emergency power, starting to buzz about this card. I think that you can expect that we will also be putting out some fresh brews with emergency powers, maybe take it in some different directions. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. So this next one, I think we've talked about in a previous one before, but I think it's nice to just kind of talk about the mechanic. Yeah. So let's get to spectacle here. Yeah. uh, I I think the last time we talked about spectacle, we, we didn't know what it, did. No, we were. It was all conjecture. Yeah. And so now we actually know what it does. Yes, we do. So Rick's Mahdi Reveler, one in a red for a 2 2, which is a great hate bear. Uh, and it says uh, when Rick's Mahdi Reveler enters the battlefield, discard a card, then draw a card. If Rick's Mahdi's Reveler's uh, spectacle cost was paid, instead discard your hand, then draw three cards. Spectacle cost is two colorless, a black, and a red. That's right. So it ended up being an alternate cost. Not an additional cost. Right. Uh, and so... It, nothing's it, being played from exile. Right. Nothing's being played for exile. We were, we're completely wrong about that. Yes, we were. And you s- were. <laughs> and so <laughs> the, in order for the spectacle cost to be played, there's there's a caveat in here that they have to... Your opponent has to have been dealt damage. Right. That turn. It's interesting. Yeah. So you I'm swing not all in that excited about this, Something like that. But, you know, or, or, or maybe you, you're playing a, a, like a burn deck or something like that and you're able to burn your opponent and then cast something like this. But I, I kind of agree with you with the spectacle cost being higher. Yeah. Kind of feels weird because all of a sudden you're now like you're trying to spend your resources to burn your opponent. And then all of a sudden you have to spend even more resources. No, it's not really trying to get you to burn your opponent, right? It's not trying to get you to cast another spell from your hand to deal damage. It wants you to it's attack. It's trying to get you to attack. Yeah. It wants you to attack your opponent, right? right? Which there are ways for us to get there again. 
again, let's not focus on just Black Red with this. Let's focus on Jund. Yeah, I think this is a this, great Jund card. Right? Yeah, this is I mean, for Jund. Uh, we are getting the opportunity to refill our hand. Cards like this suit aggro play straight up fill the battlefield swing 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 attack the life total kind of thing uh so not a fantastic card all in all uh actually think that the spectacle cost if it was one less would be much more valuable uh but make no mistake that when you have no cards in hand three cards in hand for four mana in black and red is an amazing thing Mm -hmm. an amazing ability excuse me rick's rick's mighty reveler uh, not high on my list of cards that I'll likely be seeking for play. Now, what, one of the things to kind of maybe compare this to is Bedlam Reveler. Sure. So, uh, one, it's got Reveler in the name, so I think they're trying to make a callback to that. But Bedlam Reveler, for those who don't know, is, uh, it was like, what, a, a five red red for a three four with prowess. And then when it uh, entered the battlefield, you, you discarded your hand, drew three cards, which is the spectacle uh, ability for, the, for Rick's Mahdi Reveler. But the Reveler, uh, the Bedlam Reveler had the added ability of costing less uh, for each instant and sorcery in your graveyard. Yeah. It, so it, so it, it ended up being cheaper to cast it to get that effect. And kind of gained traction as time went on. Mm-hmm. You know it, what I mean? Is that, it sees play in modern still. It does, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so it's it's a good card. I, I, think, I think this one is going to be better than what you're giving it credit for, but it's it's still like a mid-range rare it's it's not it's not going to be one that's that everyone's gonna be clamoring for it's maybe gonna be like a buck no nah, i think it'll hold steady at a quarter okay. for about a year and a half okay uh, we got frenzied erinx here uh common two colorless uh, red and a green certainly a great card for limited player draft play yes it's a three three with a riot yes and then it has trample and then it has this added ability of four red green and it gets plus three plus O oh until end of turn. Nothing wrong with a six three trampler. This is an this is a, a very good bomb. Yes, it uh, is. It, it, this this card will be a a oftentimes could be a pack one pick one because it is that is that good of a bomb well, in my opinion. You know, a four mana four four mm-hmm. is just fine. Yeah, that is just fine. A pumpable late game. We're talking limited in draft play here, right? Right. But a pumpable late game seven four trampler. Uh, when you're going to a, a Friday night magic for drafts, mm-hmm. uh, that's a doozy. Or a late game six man, or uh, 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 excuse me, a late game six power haster. Oh yeah, with trample. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. So uh, super. Yeah, uh, that's gonna be great. Just super. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely have your, have your eyes out look, uh, looking for that one. And it's a cat beast. It's a cat beast. It's a cat. Some really weird artwork. Check that one out. Frenzied Eric. Yep. Okay. Simic Ascendancy. So um, we, we did touch on this one before. Yes. We spitballed the heck out of this one. Um, so we'll just kind of just glance over it. It's a green and a blue for a do nothing enchantment that says uh, for one green and a blue, you can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. And then whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. There are going to be ways to break this card. I mean, just look at look at Adapt. Look at Zagana. Right? Yeah, Zagana alone will put four counters on it. The Adapt stuff is really going to get out of control yeah. here. I'm telling you, just stay tuned for this one. I guarantee we're going to bust this card wide open. Yep. Imperious Oligarch, an awesome, awesome common for Orzov. It, it, it's basically the common version of Tithe Taker. It right? is. It is. So Vigilance, 2-1, mm-hmm. for one white and a black. Uh, it's a human cleric. I hate that it's not a vampire. I hate that it's not a vampire. Yep. That needs to be a vampire, right? It's yep. got afterlife, one. It's a human cleric. <laughs> Look back through, just go to scryfall.com and type in creature type cleric and just look at clerics that have been produced over the, they, they just, you know, Edgewalker is probably my favorite of all time, which is also a white and a black. If you haven't seen Edgewalker, look that up. Cleric spells you cast cost one colorless less to cast. It's two, two for two. Uh, really cool cleric. But clerics stink. Nobody wants mm-hmm. clerics. People want vampires in Orzov, right? That's what we need. Uh, I'll just, I'll stop. All right. All right. So we also have uh, another card we talked about before, Lavinia Azorius Renegade. I think this is going to be a game changer. Yep. Uh, white, blue for legendary creature, two, two. Each opponent can't cast non-creature spells with converted mana cost greater than the number of lands that player controls. 
And then whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. So if you hearken back to the card we were just gushing over, Emergency Powers, mm -hmm. it's direct hate for that card as well. It is absolute hate mm -hmm. for that card. I think this card is going to make it into the Modern Humans deck. I could see that. I think that that is going to be a major addition for them as far as standard goes. I mean, okay, so so some let's talk about modern humans. I, I think it's going to see more sideboard play than anything, but it's going to definitely be good against uh, Emmercool Breach decks. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, because it just completely shuts any down. through the Breach deck. Yeah, any through the Breach deck. It, it, it just completely shuts it down. Um, so I think, to be honest, I, I think we're actually going to be able to see a pretty cool Hate Bear deck. Whether it's five color because of all the uh, dual lands that we're getting or not, but you know if, if you look at Tithe Taker, we have Rick's Mahdi Reveler, we have this card, we've got um, other two drops from previous sets that also have this Hate Bear type of style. I think we kind of see a pretty cool Hate Bear style list that is designed to just hate your opponent out of the game. I think it'd be pretty cool. It'll happen. It'll mm -hmm. happen. Rakdos Firewheeler for two black and two red for a four three at uncommon when it. Uh, enters the battlefield it deals two damage to target opponent and two damage to up to one target creature or planeswalker that is a great rakdos card yeah this is a good card yeah it is it deals i mean it, it's shock it is it's two shocks it's two shocks yeah it's two shocks plus a four power creature it, it is four mana for four three two it's not yeah. a four two i would have totally expected for the ability that we would have got a two toughness yep but a three toughness really, really matters here in the case of this human rogue. That's also probably going to be a very good limited pick as people start to move towards Rakdos. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a lot of options in Rakdos as you crack packs and you're playing three packs of just Ravnica Allegiance. That's a card in limited play that you will see get used. Guaranteed, when you first see that limited tournament show up at a Magic Fest on Twitch uh, or something out there, people will be playing Rakdos Firewheeler. I could even see it as a control methodology making it into some some even standard decks. We we will have to see uh, the requirement for two black specific, two red specific mana. Keep in mind, we also have unclaimed territory too. Sure. So it, it is a human and a rogue. So um, yes. we have a lot of humans right now and we have a few rogues, but we have a lot of humans right now. So that, that would be a good way to get a nice five color land. guild mages forum, which I think people really haven't quite adopted mm -hmm. yet from... Uh, Guilds of Ravnica, which is a land that says you can tap it for a colorless mana, or you can run a colorless mana through it, tap it, add a mana of any color, and if that mana was used to spend- To, to cast a creature. To cast a multicolored creature, it mm. enters the battlefield with an extra plus one, plus one counter. All of a sudden, that makes this a 5-3, or technically 5 mana, but 5-3- five, A 5-4. Five, uh, oh, excuse me, yeah, you're right, a 5-4- that also has two shocks. With two shocks on the stick. <laughs> it's so super, good. Super, super good. Super good. Uh, next is Incubation Incongruity. I love uh, this split card. I I am in love with this card. Okay, I'll let you go ahead and cover that. <clears throat> okay, so a lot of people are actually- You need a Kleenex for the drool? <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, um, <laughs> so uh, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of people are actually- Kind of poo pooing this card online, they're like, Oh, yeah, incubation's pretty great. People are poo pooing a card online. I know who would have thought. Oh my goodness, it, like they, they were they were going all after the, the incubation portion of this card. I think the incongruity portion of this card is actually bonkers in standard, yes. So it, it is now, now in other formats, eh, maybe not. Maybe you could see some play in commander, maybe a little bit in modern, but I think specifically. In standard, dude, being able to exile a creature for three mana, dude, in green and blue, yeah, exile target creature, yeah, okay, and, and sure, instant they, speed, sure, instant speed, and sure, they get a three three. Who cares? You're in green and blue, you're gonna have a six sixes and eight eights. That's right. I mean, who cares? That's right. So, uh, I think, <laughs> I think where this is gonna initially see uh, some play is in merfolk i think this is exactly what merfolk needed the uh incubation portion is uh one green one blue or excuse me one green or blue it's a, it's a hybrid mana uh you can look at the top five cards of your library and then you can find a creature from from there reveal it and put it in your hand if that's not the turn one play that merfolk needed besides kumena's speaker right because that's mm -hmm. the general turn one play right now in standard for merfolk is to drop the one one that says it gets plus one plus one if you control another merfolk or an island, mm -hmm. right? 
Uh, so that's an acceptable turn one play as well. But uh, I mean, th- this what? this is not a a bad late game draw. This is it, commune it, with dinosaurs for Merfolk. Yeah, that's all it is. Well, I, I mean, I mean, just in general, this card is not a a, a bad late game. No, draw, right? of course not. Because you're going to get rid of the big thing that's stopping you from attacking. Exile e- by target it. creature at instant speed. Or you can get uh, dig five deep to find a merfolk that you need. So why are they poo-pooing it? it, it, it they're, they're saying it's an overcosted Ponga Pie on the <laughs> other side. So I, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, it is. It is. But you also get the incubation portion of it, right? Like, like you, you get that. You get the ability to dig. It's instant speed. Yep. Yes, I understand. I mean, Pongify is a very powerful card. It is. It is an overcosted Pongify, but it does present additional options, mm-hmm. right? And what happens with Merfolk more often than not? You run, run out, of, out of cards. Yeah, you run, you out, of run out of cards because you're not accurately drawing because they have spotted removal for your Kamena, which is stopping you from drawing your cards. And this is not a bad top deck. No. You've not lost at all. your last Kamena. You need another Kamena. Dig for one. There he is. Yep. There he is. Uh, what's also great about this card, too, that we should probably touch on, is that you can play this in a mono blue deck. Okay. So there's not a lot of cards that let you dig five deep for a creature in a blue deck. No. No, so, there's not. Um, I, I think this could see some play if you have um, some sort of a like big creature. I don't mind trying to find my next Tempest Gen to end the game faster. Right. Do you? Or, no, not at all. Or, or maybe maybe this you run this in your um your blue white control deck and there you're trying you to go. find there like your Chromium or something like Lyra. that. Right. Trying to get Lyra. that next Lyra out yep. there. Yeah. So it, it, I think that this is going to be a great addition to even a deck like that where you maybe run one or two just to try to find your big finisher. Okay. Yeah. I think I think we'll end up seeing more play than all the poo pooers. Mm-hmm. Or poo pooing. <laughs> so anyway, Sphinx's insight. I like this common. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's two two white blue instant speed. It's balanced. Yeah, draw two cards, and if you cast it as a sorcery with a dindum, you also gain two life. It is balanced. It also just just to, just to specify, it doesn't have to be a sorcery speed. It just says when you whenever you cast a spell during your main phase. That's correct. So you can still cast it in response to somebody. As long as it's in your main phase, you, you gain two life. It's balanced. It's a good card. I like it. It's a good card. It'll see limited play for sure. I don't know that it'll really sink into some of the maybe. Big it, it, it depends on how decks. it depends on how aggressive Rakdos gets. Yeah, right. Because if they want to be burning a lot of life, yeah. Well, then something like this where you can gain life back is is perfect. But I think Chemister's Insight is just a better card. Yep. Let's wait and see on Sphinx's yeah. Insight. We'll see what happens. I guarantee I'll be playing it in a draft format at some point. Yep. Light Up the Stage was the first card ever spoiled in Ravnica Allegiance. Yep. It's two and a red for a sorcery with Spectacle of Red. Again, you ha- they have to be dealt damage for you to cast it for that, that alternate cost. And then it says, exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play the- those cards. Play. Being the yep. appropriate word there, which means dig for lands. Mana. Yep. We can find mana and play mana. What what I like about this card is I think it'd be really good to fit inside of my primal punishment deck. Mm-hmm. So uh, you guys can go to www.landsaygo.com and check out our article section or our deck tech section to find all of the, the deck decks that we have uh, put out there. Uh, so primal punishment was one that was a, a red black punishment deck running risk factor. And sword point diplomacy for card advantage, and then also deals damage to your opponents. Well, having an, yet another card advantage engine in there that you can cast for just a single red, I think is going to be really good. The brew you posted yesterday uh, is really, really awesome. And the brew that I'm going to post tomorrow is really, really awesome. I am excited about the way we're closing out this Guilds of Ravnica season for this particular set. Yep, Uh, We are closing out this season in strength with some really hardcore brews here. I'm I'm really proud of what we've done, uh, uh, especially yesterday and then tomorrow. This is going to be good stuff. Aeromunculus. What does this one do, JB? Average at best is what it does. (laughs) Uh, We've got one colorless, a green and a blue for a two, three flyer with adapt one for four mana. How much more average can it be? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, We're it's just gonna let average. him flutter off, but for the rest of the. It is a humunculus. So those who are building a humunculus <laughs> tribal deck in Commander, this is your dude. There he is, man. <laughs> yeah, look no further. 
<laughs> homunculus tribal mutant coming your way. Although he is in green, so good luck finding Boy, it. Boy, I'm so glad they printed the homunculus. I don't know. <laughs> you know, there are some pretty good homunculi in magic, mm-hmm. uh, but not this one. Uh, Rafter Demon, two colorless, a black and a red. Spoiled pretty early here with a spectacle cost. Rafter Demon enters the battlefield. The spectacle cost was paid. Each opponent discards a card. It's a 4-2. Again, common style card it's good to have some filler in the set probably not one that's going to win a world championship no with uh, rafter demon there no i I think this is uh, like you say a good filler card um if you're playing this in draft you know it's it's probably a good pick three pick four to five something like that um yeah i I think the the fact that it's a a four power for four mana is really good yeah and then if you happen to be able to deal damage your opponent being able to force him to discard a card and limited it's gonna be really great i'm a little disappointed i haven't seen any death touch yet generally you do see some death touch from the demons and, Mm -hmm. and whatnot i am glad that we have seen a rafter demon spoiled because liliana's contract now becomes much more of a thing yeah right much more of a thing well, we're going to get more demons yep. that might actually be possible. There might be some good things here. I'll tell you a card that I do love that's been spoiled is Gate Colossus. Mm, what's that do? I, I love Gate Colossus. Eight colorless for an 8-8. Eight, eight, costs one less to cast for each gate you control. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. And whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control, you can put Gate Colossus from your graveyard on top of your library. So this goes really well. I may have with- taken that too far. So th- this card goes really well with, was it uh, Guild Summit? Yes, it does. So two and a blue, Guild Summit is an enchantment. I I, I am gushing over this card because I, I, I think it has some actually some good power to we it. We need the other gates, though. Yeah. yeah. So it, it says, uh, whenever a Guild Summit enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to the number of gates you control. Yeah. And then it says, whenever Crazy. you play a gate, you draw a card. Yeah. So that card has a lot of power to it. And playing something like Gate Glosses, where all of a sudden... Uh, it has affinity for gates. Crazy. You can get it. I mean, so. With Circuitous Root? Yeah. Crazy stuff <laughs> going on here, man. I mean, you could theoretically get this down turn four if you're running, let's say, like Llanowar Elves. And what was that red enchantment that you liked? Blood Sun, where it, it basically takes away all the abilities on lands other than mana abilities. So so all of a sudden with Blood Sun, uh, not, not only does it cycle itself, but your gates come into play untapped. Beautiful. So Just beautiful. So uh, turn one, you play a gate. Turn two, you play Lana War Elves in a gate. Turn three, you play Blood Sun and then an untapped gate. And then the next turn, you can play your gate Colossus. Off it goes. Yep. Da, 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 da. So I, I think this is great. It, it also uh, could be seen some pretty good synergy with like discard strategies. And Awakened Amalgam just belongs yeah. in a deck like that where yeah. it gets up, you know, it gets plus one, plus one for and- every different named land you control and imagine guild summit with scape shift beautiful right man just so, so beautiful and then, and then yeah. you, we also have uh crucible of worlds to get back those gates that we just pop them up. right back in uh, we have circuitous route right now I, I mean like i think a gate deck is really shaping it's coming. up and, and, and i think it's it's gonna have a little bit more power than people and we haven't seen the mazes end yet that's true it's that's true coming something I, like that's coming i'm i'm hoping I'm hoping that Gate Glasses isn't supposed to be the finisher. I don't think it is. Um, I, it's I, a supplement. Yeah, I do think we're gonna. I, I do hope we're gonna see a. There will be a rare or a mythic, mythic or something like that. It'll be a mythic. Um, it'll be a jank mythic. I'll put a, a rare. I'll but, put a pack yeah. of Reese's Pieces on it. Okay. That says we get some mythic style gate something that does something. Sacrifice a gate, deal twenty damage uncounterable unpreventable damage <laughs> no i'm taking it too far uh, okay. again. well it could be like a cough ultimate where it says tap a gate deal of damage yes i could say something like that that'd be kind of cool yeah that'd be good mm-hmm. that'd be good tap a gate deal of damage uh, sacrifice a gate deal three damage mm-hmm. something like that right and then with crucible of worlds we just bring it right back mm-hmm. so anyway uh the haunt of the high tower mythic Mm-hmm. six converted mana cost so this is one that you're not going to see in packs by the way this is your buy a box promo right so uh jeremy is right six mana four black black for a legendary creature vampire it's a three three with flying and lifelink and it says whenever it attacks defending player discards a card and then whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere Put a plus one, plus one counter on Haunt of the High Tower. Ooh, I so, like this guy. So th- this guy, I think, is appropriately costed. Uh, he's a, he's a, an appropriate power level for a buy a box promo. 
because it's going to be limited run, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think this guy has more playability than people give it credit for. No question about it. So you're able to like mill your opponent or something like that after you get this guy down. And then all of a sudden he's like a 5-5 five five with, with lifelink. Okay. So and now, flying. So, 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 and flying. So, so now all of a sudden he's like this big beater in the air that's getting you back alive. And it just gets worse. And it and they forces them to discard cards. You know what this kind of reminds me of? Like like a Spectre Legendary. He's like Sangir Vampire on Awesome. <laughs> that's what he is. He is like, he is really, really cool. I hate that he dies to a lightning strike the moment he enters the battlefield. I don't like that he's a six mana. At five mana, he would be truly mythic. But- there are ways, and we will probably see ways to make the Haunt of the High Tower really break the game. Oh, you know, I'm going to build around them. Of course. Yeah. yeah you're going to get your hands on these Haunt of High Towers. Yep. Imagine imagine playing this with, with something like uh, Ritual of Soot. So you get him down, you Perfect. cast Ritual of Soot, you blow up your opponent's board, and you, you all of a sudden swing in with like an 8-8 with lifelink, game back all the life you lost. <laughs> and forces them to discard a card. Off he goes. <laughs> And we'll end this with a common. This is one that I know that you are really, really excited about. I love this card so much. And we've had a little bit of spoiler season going on uh, since Wednesday, right? Since mm-hmm. yesterday, we've got some additional cards, and we'll cover some of those in next week's podcast. But, oh, yeah, we will. But let's capstone this with Growth Spiral. Keep in mind that spoiler season lasts all the way up until two weeks before the release of the set. Take us away on the final one for the day, Debo. Growth Spiral, green to blue. Instant speed, draw a card, you can put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. This card is so good. It's crazy. It's so good. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's an instant explorer. It's it is, so good. It is out <laughs> of control powerful. Oh my God. I Maybe can't believe printed this. I don't know. <laughs> I know. It's, <laughs> it's, so good. it's basically where I'm at when I look at this card. <laughs> and, like, then it's, and then it's a common. It's a common. It's a common. Let's talk about the ability. Let's uh, let's talk about the ability to take that spell, for example, and put it on an Isochron Scepter. Talk about <laughs> the ability of putting That's a growth so spiral on an Isochron Scepter. Okay, so imagine this in like Commander, right? So you're 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 playing this, and someone plays something like a Maze of Ith or sure uh, uh, some other bad land. Uh, 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 glacial chasm. Sure, glacial chasm. That's fine. And then at the end of turn, you're like, okay, great. I'll flash in my wasteland and blow up your glacial hey! chasm. Like, it's so good. It's so good. This card, I'm telling you, growth spiral. And more on this later, but I can guarantee that some of the decks that we brew, that you see the community brew, you will see this in a deck that wins a magic fest. I guarantee it. It is that powerful. Okay, we are in the throes of spoiler season. Stay tuned to the main phase for episode 109 next Thursday, and then the Thursday after that, and the Thursday after that, (laughs) and the Thursday after that. And be sure to check back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for articles, deck texts, and the like. And we look forward to hearing from you guys. Leave us comments beneath each one of those articles. We love to hear it. Uh, Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. Submit your deck lists and and let us know if you'd like to have us uh, review it or to give any deck doctor type of a thing with it. Uh, We'd love to see those lists. We love it when they come in. So anyways, landsaygo.com. And as we wrap up this holiday season, peace and love to you and yours. We will see you in 2019.